Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Final Fantasy, part of our Final Fantasy Marathon. So, last time we completed the introductory quest for this, uh, which saw us seeing off Garland before he knocked us all down. And now it's time to cross the bridge and go to the northern continent. Well, not the far northern continent, but north of where we start anyway, north of Cornelia. So... Before that, no, of course, that means fighting our way through a bunch of goblins and other things that want to kill us. Because this is a Final Fantasy game, after all. Pierre already up to two hits. Rather than just one. If we look at their status panel... Um... This is actually calculated slightly differently to the original NES version, I believe, because the, the NES had a um, accuracy value that was expressed as a percentage. And basically, the higher that went, uh, the more hits you would do. There were sort of certain boundaries you would cross at various points, and that would cause you to do extra hits on a regular basis. But anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves because we've got a nice fancy cutscene going on here. This cutscene actually was in the original NES version. Um, obviously not looking quite as nice as this rather pleasant purple sky we've got here. But here we are. And so their quest began. As the four warriors of light, they felt overwhelmed by the great task destiny had placed before them. I'll read a little bit slower, shall I? <laughs> Come on. Or is that it? Oh no. They did not even know the true significance of the four crystals they held in their hands. This is unnaturally slow to read out. You don't really notice that unless you're, uh, you're actually reading it out loud. Oh, and the colour's changing in the background, that's nice. The crystals that had once, long ago, held a light that shone so brilliantly... The time for their journey had come. The time to cast off the veil of darkness and bring the world once more into light. One thing I always felt with the original Final Fantasy, both in this version and the original NES version, is that these sequences, they go on just slightly, just slightly uncomfortably too wrong. Wrong? Long. Um, <laughs> it's like they were writing it and they thought, oh, we've got a bit of space left over, we should just fill it up with a few more words. Why don't you, why don't you say the same thing but slightly differently? Okay. So with that out of the way, we can now proceed to the north. And immediately you run into um, a key aspect of this original game, which is going, I, I don't know where to go. So we reach this fork in the road here. We can head north. In which case we'll find this little dock here. And some forest. And eventually we'll actually see that that fork in the road just goes around those mountains and they both end up in the same place. But there's numerous points in Final Fantasy where you'll be confronted with a decision on where to go next. And the route you're supposed to go won't necessarily be immediately obvious. And the reason for that is that unlike a lot of later Final Fantasies, there's not really a, a sort of linear plot to follow in this. There's a bunch of things you have to do to finish it. But aside from there being a kind of natural order to approach them in, in terms of the level of the stuff you come up against, there's no real obligation to do them in a specific order. They're not de most of the time they're not dependent on one thing happening before another. Let's nuke some wolves. Let's see if we can lightning all of them. How do we lightning all of them? Can we lightning all of them? I thought we could. What do I have to press to lightning all of them? 
Or is it only the higher level spells that can do all of them? I think it might be. Oh, well, that's disappointing. Well, let's put them all to sleep then instead. This is another nice thing over the original NES version. Um, the original NES version, due to presumably due to limitations, um, it wouldn't display things like status effects. You just have to remember which ones had been afflicted by sleep or poison or paralysis or whatever. And that can be quite difficult to keep track of when you are fighting maybe nine enemies at once as you are sometimes in this game. So this is just one of many examples of how this PSP version, it might not necessarily be the most authentic version of Final Fantasy there is, but the refinements and changes it's made to the formula certainly make it a bit more, a bit more palatable and a bit more playable from a modern perspective. If you find the um, the issues with the original NES version to just be a little bit difficult to overcome. Plus, it looks and sounds lovely. So I mentioned in the introduction that um, there was a Wonder Swan Color version of this game uh, after the MSX port. So that was originally in around 2000 or so, and the Wonder Swan Color version was then ported to PlayStation. Um, and that's when the music that you're currently hearing was added to this game. So I've not actually heard what the Wonder Swan Color did uh, with the music for this, but I know that this particular mix of the music was done for the PlayStation 1 version, which used the Wonder Swan graphics and enhanced music. And then the. GBA version I think used the Wonder Swan color version as a base and then added additional content and then this PSP version it revamped the graphics again so these graphics are superior to the PlayStation 1 and Wonder Swan color versions but it kept the music from the PS1 version. Is that convoluted enough for you? Hopefully. Anyway I'm kind of lost already. Oh, ogres. Uh, this might be bad. Is this bad? I hope it's not bad. I guess... I guess we'll find out. Maybe I'll protect Tim. And meanwhile, Tim can put them all to sleep. Uh, not awful. But I think doing 13 damage to your fighter at this point is uh, quite a lot. There we go. You have a nice nap. You miss. Also good. Um, yeah, let's carry on wailing on this one. You can try and sleep him again. Very nice. All of them are asleep. Which means we can hack and slash away at them at our leisure. Uh, you can cure Sam, because he's starting to get a bit low on hit points. You can set fire to this ogre. Ow. See, at this point, we can probably take this as a signal that maybe we're going the wrong way, because these enemies are noticeably stronger than what we've been fighting up until this point. Um, and so in this game, that's normally a signal that you should probably go and do something else for a bit. Yeah, these are doing an uncomfortable amount of damage to us, so uh, I think after we've cleared this fight, we'll head back the other way. And uh, try and go where we should be going. Now, if you've played the NES version, you can probably already see how the... Um, the more modern magic point system has changed the balance of this game quite a bit. 
because I'm able to use magic a lot more in this game than I would be able to in the original NES version because you start with a very stingy number of spells to be able to use per level. Um, and the only way you can replenish them is through resting at an inn. There are items you can use to rest in the field. Uh, that from what I can remember, there are tents, cottages, and houses. But I think only cottages and houses actually restore hit points from what I remember. And so there's... Uh, in the original, there were no ethers or anything to be able to restore your magic points while you're out and about. So you have to be very, very careful with um, using your magic. Which kind of made the mages in the early game feel more like a liability than something you'd really want in your party. Whereas in this version, I find that they're much more fun to have around because you can cast a lot more magic with them. And again, a purist might say that that's not the authentic Final Fantasy 1 experience, but uh, this is an... an... a... Final Fantasy experience you can have right now. In fact, this is the Final Fantasy experience that is more readily accessible right now than the original NES version, so... It doesn't make it invalid. I feel like I'm justifying myself a lot in terms of playing this version. The, the reality is I, I play this version just because I like it, just because I, I think it's fun to play. There's nothing wrong with the... Well, there are things wrong with the original NES version, which is a whole other matter, but... Um, yeah, I just really like this version. And it exists, it's official, so there's no reason not to enjoy it, really. So the problems with the original NES version are that probably at least half of the spells didn't work. Like, at all. I don't really know why, because I haven't looked into that side of things, but there were certainly a significant number of spells in Final Fantasy on the NES that just did not do anything at all. So you could buy them, you could cast them, but when you did cast them, nothing would happen. Now, as I say, I, I haven't looked into the background of this specifically, so I don't know if this is true or not, but what I suspect happened is there was probably something went wrong in the conversion process from the original Famicom version to the NES version. Um, because if you imagine, like, the internal game logic referring to, say, the original Japanese name of a spell, and then the menus referring to the localised English version of a spell, that would cause some problems. Although, if that's the case... It doesn't really explain why that wasn't the case for all the spells, then. I don't know. H hard to say. But the fact is, in the original Final Fantasy for NES, there were lots of spells that didn't work. There were also a bunch of items that didn't do what they were supposed to as well. There were items that were supposed to um, do things like confer elemental bonuses and have added effects and that sort of thing. And most of them didn't work either, so... Now again, the fact that a lot of those do work in this port here may lead you to believe that this is not a particularly authentic port of the original Final Fantasy, but again, what we have there is the question of whether something that was maybe more authentic to the original intention, even if it's not the same to what originally got released, whether that's something you want. I don't know, there's lots of interesting discussions and, and things you can think about with regard to this game. Which is good, because I need to talk about lots of things, because we're getting into lots of fights. Um, because that's what you do in early Final Fantasy games. They're fairly light on story, fairly heavy on combat. And so that's what we have to deal with for our... Ouch! Those are painful. Thunder did a reasonable amount of damage. One thing that this game added to the mix, or sort of introduced, if you like, um, that was based on some of the creators' love of Western role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons, was the idea of elemental resistances and weaknesses. 
Um, so that, that becomes quite a key part of this game the further you go. Because certain enemies are much easier to deal with if you bear in mind the elements that they're strong and weak against. As well as status effects and stuff, status effects are very helpful in this game. So sleep we've already seen can really help control a crowd of enemies, especially while you don't have any AoE spells that can target multiple things at the same time. Missed! And so although you don't have a ton of tactical options in this game compared to later installments in the series, it still th keeps things quite interesting. Each character's class makes them nice to unique. I cannot find where we're supposed to be going. Ow. And I'm out of magic points for Tom. Which is not good. I'm also nearly out of magic points for Tim as well. It's just not a great position to be in, is it? Keep hitting it! Stab! Ow! Ugh. So, at least we're getting plenty of experience. Now, if I remember correctly... I did not remember correctly. There is a button combination you can hold down to... See a map? That's a bestiary. Um, let's use some of these potions just to get everyone in a slightly better state than they are. Ah, oh, there we go. So, sleeping bag is the basic rest item. Uh, tent partially restores your hit points and magic points. So let's use one of those now, just so Tim and Tom have got some magic points to play with. Any original NES version, any time you rested was also an opportunity to save. Um, so let's do that now. Just in case, you know. Now we're looking for a town. Which doesn't seem to be one to be found at the minute. And I thought it was this way, but we're about to hit a dead end, so it's obviously another way. I wonder if Sam's at the point where he should start using his fists now instead, so... The moment he's got attack 20, accuracy 33, so if we remove this... Well, attack 18, accuracy 33, so he's, he's almost there. So a couple more levels and we'll ditch his weapon entirely and he'll become a fist fighter. Wolves, that's more like it. So, as you might expect, the two mages are not particularly good at melee combat. And they can they can chip away a bit of damage, but... Their actual performance of their basic attack command becomes a lot less the further you go in the game, so... The fighter, the monk, and the thief will... Ah, there we are. The fighter, the monk, the monk and the thief will get very much ahead of those two, and they will become much more reliant on their spells the further you go. Right, let's save here again. I know it's not long since we last saved, but let's uh, let's just be safe. And let's head in. See the town of Provoka. Please help us. All right. With what? I know what, but you know, I'm just playing along. Oh, he can dude. What do you have to say for yourself? Those blasted pirates. They're running around looting and pillaging like they own the place. So pirates, eh? There's some pirates. Let's just have a look around before we go and 
encounter those pirates. Hello. Welcome. You have potions and stuff. Uh, oh, they do sell ethers in this as well. So, again, like I say, another change from the NES version. So you can actually restore your magic points a bit more easily out in the field. I want to say you couldn't get in these shops before you fought the pirates in the original version as well, but I, I can't say that for sure. Uh, let's buy some iron armor for Pierre. And... Leather sh... Yes. Yes, the leather shield for Pierre. And leather gloves for everyone else. That weight stat, I don't remember being in the original. Um, presumably that gives you some sort of indication of... Oh, you can wear gloves as well as a shield. Alright, one more pair of gloves then. Um, presumably that gives you some sort of indication of how... Um, it will affect your speed in combat. There we go. So if we look at the status screen, do they have a weight stat? No. No. Maybe it affects their agility. So if we take Tom as an example there, he's currently got agility 7. If I remove those leather gloves and then look at Tom again, he's still got agility 7. Okay, I don't know what weight does then. But it's there. <laughs> right, so if we can get in the armor shop, I guess there must be a weapon shop somewhere as well. So let's have a ferret around for that before we take on those pirates there. Stop at the inn. Stuff by a dancer. How about that? You got anything to say for yourself? Please, come in. We charge 50 gil per night. Would you like to stay? Not right now, lady. I've got work to do, but uh, I'll be back. Uh, there's the weapon shop, and there's a magic shop as well. So, you can have Blizzard. Dark blinds all foes. Temper raises one ally's attack. And slow reduces a foe's number of attacks. I think dark's probably the most useful out of uh, dark and slow. So we'll take dark and we'll take temper as well. Because being able to buff up um, Pierre and Sam's attack power in particular will be very useful later on. We've got a white magic shop as well. Doesn't seem like it. Right, I already got a hammer. Get a broadsword. Oh, I can't afford it. Damn it. I can afford a scimitar. Or I could sell some of this rubbish. Or indeed, just the chainmail. Because that's the only thing I've actually replaced. Uh, still not quite enough. Scimitar is better. Is it worth buying that? It's only 160 gil. Can't hurt, can it? There we go. And then sell that rapier. It's marginally better. It's not massive amount better, but it is marginally better. Better than a kick in the teeth, as they say. Is there really no white magic shop? Oh, no. There it is. Hello. Uh, um... We're silenced, definitely. Cure darkness quite help. Oh, I've only got two gil left. Well, silence it is then. <laughs> right, let's fight some pirates. And just what be ye doing here? Ye wouldn't be looking to make trouble with bickers, bickeneers, would ye? Ah, uh, you both say the same thing. Hello. 
Eve got cannonballs of steel to be taken on the great pirate Bicky. Keel all on, boys. Aye, aye, Captain, we'll make their bones go crunch. Oh no, so many pirates. What will we do? Well, we'll start in this corner and we will hack and slash across them. Let's protect Tim so he can get some spells off. He can sleep them all, first of all. Night, night. Eh, not bad, not bad. Could be better, but not bad. See, these guys are pretty easy to defeat, so it's, it's easy to be quite daunted by the fact that there's so many of them to begin with, but they're not really much of a problem. Um, so, how's everyone doing? Not too bad. So, let's protect Tom. Uh, you can blind everyone. That's a great sound effect. I really like the graphical effects in this. They're kind of reminiscent of the 16-bit Final Fantasy games on the Super NES. Um, but just a little bit better. They've just got a slight bit more polish than the ones we had in those games. Uh, what else? Let's temper Pierre. Probably unnecessary at this point. But why not? Haha, <laughs> I have a shield. And... You don't really need to do much else really, do you? So you can hit them with a hammer. Uh, let's... Temper Sam while we're on as well. Since that has a pretty large effect from the look of things. Ooh! Big ol' hit from Tom there. What a way to finish. Taken down by a white mage's hammer. How embarrassing. Level ups for everyone! Except Tim. Because he died in the first episode, so he's now behind everyone else. I'd be most sorry, young masters. I'll be making no more fuss, I swear. I want you to take me ship for your troubles. Can you find it in your heart to forgive an old pirate? If you're gonna give me a ship, sure. You obtain a ship! I love that. You just like... It's just like you, you got a ship now. Cool. Sweet. I've had myself a change of art. I plan to buckle down and be the hardest worker in town. You believe me, don't you? So we've saved the town of Provoca. Because of you, we needn't fear the pirates anymore. Thank you so much. That's nice, isn't it? I don't think there are any ports to the north. A ship can only make landfall at a port, you know. It's a clue. Um, how much money do we get from that? Not enough to get my fancy weapons, but enough to get another white magic spell. So, I already got silence. Let's also get... Uh, blindner. Blindner. Whatever you want to call it. I always read that as blindner, even though it probably is blindner. Well, that does that just removes the blind effect if you get it inflicted on yourself. All right, let's go stay at the inn. And this is probably a good place to call it for today. Please come in. We charge fifty kill per night. Would you like to stay? Yes, I would. Let's have a nice nap. Pleasant dreams. Okay, so on that note, I'll just say as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. 
Be sure to check out murraygamer.net for new articles on Japanese and Japanese-inspired video games, new and old, every weekday. Every month, Murray Gamer features an in-depth exploration of an individual game or series as its cover game, so be sure to check the archives to see if your favourite has had a deep dive yet. If you'd like to support the site directly, please consider becoming a patron or buying me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.